and welcome to the ramen training video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use this machine. And the first thing you have to do is go over to the computer and open up the lab spec 5 program. And when you open up this program you'll notice that it'll have to do a detector initialization. That's fine, just wait to do anything until this uh, image has disappeared. Right, now that that's gone away, what you're going to have to do is actually cool down the detector. So you're going to go up to Acquisition, Detector, set this to negative 70, and hit OK. Right, and as that goes, you should be able to see the temperature change down here. And once it gets to negative 70, this box will change from orange and yellow to blue. Now our detector is all cooled down and we can start working with the machine. The most important parameters that you're going to need are all down here at the bottom of the screen. Starting with the laser, you have two options. The one that's normally installed in there is the 632 nanometer laser, but there's also a 784 nanometer laser. If you want to switch the configuration, you're going to have to ask uh, one of the assistants at CMSC to help you go ahead and switch that. It's not something you can just click on here and have it work. You have to change the configuration manually. So for now we're going to stick with the 632 laser. We're uh, going to start off with no filter, a hole of 250 uh, micrometers, a slit of 100 micrometers. And these are pretty standard. These will work pretty well for almost any sample. The next thing that's important is the spectrometer. So we're going to tune with silica and we know where that peak is. So we're going to go ahead and type in about where we think that peak is going to be, which is 650. Now when you type something in to the computer, you have to be sure to hit enter. When you hit enter, you will see things start to move. It will happen a little bit slowly, so give it a few seconds before you start uh, changing other parameters. So now that we're at about 650, I can show you the other parameters. We have, uh, over here we have the grading and the microscope objective. These two always stay the same. If you want to label something, you can tag it. Um, otherwise, we'll go over to the, ac the exposure time, the acquisition time, and the um, accumulation number, which is the number of cycles it runs. When you're just doing the calibration, one, one, and five usually go really well. So now that we have the parameter set that we need to work on, we can go back over to the machine. So here's the basic settings of the control box. We have the key to turn the laser on and off, as well as all of these switches. When you're using this, you want the switches to be the direction the tape is labeled. So on, so off, on, off, off. And when you're using this laser, you can switch it on. And this shutter should be on as well. Alright, so but before we actually use the laser, we're going to show you the silica sample that you tune with. Over here I have a clean piece of silica that I'm going to use for tuning. And I'm going to go ahead and place that just under the microscope to start. Alright, at the very top, at the very top it's also important to know where the microscope is for the camera, and that's right here. This is a very gentle knob. You don't have to turn very hard either direction. It's a very simple motion. You can see the lock right here. You just lift up and turn. This is very gentle. It doesn't take any pressure. And then to put it in, you just drop. So right now, the camera's in. If you want to take it out, you pull straight up and turn to the lock. So we're going to go ahead and put the camera in, and we're going to turn the light source on over here. Usually, um, a light source value of about six and a half works really well, so I would suggest starting there. Now that we have our camera in and the light source on, we can see the screen over here is on, and we can start to focus on the sample. The focusing knobs are over here on the side. You've got large movements and smaller movements. And you'd be surprised how close you actually have to get to the sample in order to be focused. So let's see here. Can move this just a little bit. Okay, so now that we're almost near focused, I'm going to show you a couple of important things. 
when you get close to focus on the silica sample, you'll see something like this. This is not actually the sample. All right? You have to go a little bit farther than that, and I'll show you how you know if you got to the right spot in just a second. So once you keep focusing, this is actually where you want to be. You might see a couple little scratches like that one up in the corner or other dark spots. But the reason you know that this is definitely the right sample is over here you have this little joystick that will move the stage. And when you move the stage, you should see the sample move. So I'm going to use this joystick just to nudge it a little bit, and you should see a little bit of movement. So the fact that you can see the movement means that you are, in fact, on the sample, which is a good thing. So now that we know we're focused on the sample, we don't need the camera in there anymore. In fact, if it's in there, while you're trying to run a sample, it'll get in the way of the laser. So we'll go ahead and just pull this camera up gently and lock it. And we'll turn the light source off and turn the control box on. All right. Now, in order to turn the laser on, I don't, you can't, probably can't see anything right here, you won't see a laser on until you actually flip this switch. So you'll hear a little click when you flip it on as well. Okay, and now you should be able to see that the laser is in fact on. Now we're going to head back to the computer. I'm going to turn the lights off in the room. And for this initial calibration, you're actually just going to use... Um, this this scroll over here and when you click on that you'll get one single peak now this is the silica peak it should be right around 500 if it's not 500 then you should come get one of the workers here at CMSC to go ahead and fix that for you but for now this looks absolutely great and we know that the machine is calibrated once you know that you can go ahead and click the stop button at the top You can turn the lights back on, turn the laser off, and get the sample, or the silica sample, out of the way. Now the next sample I prepared to show you how to actually take data acquisition is a powder sample. And when you make a powder sample, you want to smush it down flat in between two glass slides or under a spatula, so you get a nice smooth surface to focus on. So we'll go ahead and put the sample right underneath. We'll raise it up a little bit. All right. Turn the light source back on. And drop the camera in. Now that the camera is in, we can go ahead and focus on the glass by moving these two knobs again, right here. Now, sometimes it takes a bit of a delicate hand, so if you don't get it at first, it's okay. Alright, so... Looks like my sample's just about there. So I think I'm focused on my sample. In order to check, I'm going to move the joystick. And it looks like I am. Now there's a little trick. You see this black dot in the center of the screen is where the Raman's going to be taking the spectrum from. So let's say I wanted to look at this black spot as opposed to the white spot. You'll know about where the spectrum is taken from so you can adjust for that in the future. I'm going to make this focus a little better if I can. Okay, so now that we're focused on the sample, we're going to go ahead and turn the laser on. And you should be able to see the laser right there like you can. Go ahead and turn the light room off. So before we start taking any spectrum for data, there's a few things you should know. If you have a range that you want to actually be within, so let's say you have a wavelength number you're interested, you can go to Acquisition, Extended Range, and pick the range you want to be in. So we're going to stick with this for now. It's 50 to 1,000, but you can change that uh, depending on your application. Also, something that I've already changed is the acquisition values down here. So typically for uh, calibration, you do 1, 1, and 5, but I like to increase that a little bit, get a little less noise in my signal by changing it to 5, 5, and 25. You can play with these values to see what works best with your sample. But now once you have these values set and the extended range set, you go ahead and click this pig up here with the yellow circle behind it to start acquiring your spectrum. 
It takes a little bit of time for this to show up, so you gotta be a little bit patient, but it will give you an estimated time here down at the bottom. So it says it's going to take about seven minutes. It will not quite take that long. Usually the first guess is quite an over-exaggeration of what, how long it will actually take. You can see the first bit of my spectrum is going to start rolling in, and I will show you guys the final result when it's all in. Okay, so all the data's come through, and it looks like a pretty good graph. So now we are going to go over here and turn our laser off. I should probably turn the lights back on in the room. So the laser is off. We can't see it anymore. And now we have a nice pretty graph to look at. Now this is pretty smooth. I don't see a lot of noise, but for those of you that do have noise in your graph, I'll show you how to take care of that. So right up here at the top, you have a few options. You have your baseline correction and you have your smoothing. Smoothing is where you get rid of noise. You can decide to what degree you'd like to smooth uh, and how big the peaks are that you would want to smooth. So I'm just going to go ahead and click smooth because I'm good with those degrees. And did I click it? Smooth. Close. So it didn't change very much, mostly because I already had a very smooth graph. If you're going to do um, a little bit noisier, you'll see a bigger change. One other thing you can do up here is the baseline correction. And you can go ahead and pick what type of baseline you'd like to make, the degree. And my suggestion would be to click fit, not auto. If you do auto, it'll automatically do it and you won't get a chance to see it. If you click fit, you can see where it thinks the baseline is. Right? So it thinks this is where the baseline is. If I clicked sub as it is now, that's what would become the baseline. If you think hang on, wait a second, that doesn't look good, you can go ahead and change um, the type or the degree to which your baseline is fit. So let's say we changed it to, I don't know, four. You'll see it have a different baseline fit. And I personally don't think this looks particularly good, so I'm gonna again go back to seven. And I think that looks all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and click sub, and you'll see it subs down the baseline. Alright, so that's how you uh, get your spectrum and manipulate it a little bit. And Okay, so we have our data. Now all we need to do is clean up. So, of course, when you're done, you're going to take your samples with you. You're going to wipe off the uh, microscope objective with just a little bit of isopropanol on a towel or a, uh, a Kim wipe. And the only thing you have to do for this, the laser should already be off, is turn the key. And you're done. One last thing you have to do before you go is we need to bring the detector back up to room temperature. So just like we did before, we're going to go up to acquisition, detector, and change this to room temperature. Click set and OK. And then it'll start to go up. Slowly but surely we'll end up back at 23 degrees. And that's the last step you have to do besides signing out of the notebook, and then you're good to go.